Hello everybody, Mrs. Seals here. We are going to practice painting some watercolor techniques together, so you will need to find the following things. A watercolor set, paint brushes, your sketchbook, cup of water, paper towels, salt, a pencil, and either a crayon or oil pastel. So pause this video, go gather those things, and we will paint the watercolor techniques together. Alright, I have all of my supplies that I need. I've got my sketchbook, my crayons, my paint brushes, my paper towels, some salt, a cup of water, and my watercolor paint set, and lastly, a pencil. So the first thing we need to do is activate our paints. So we're just going to get some droplets of water and drop them into each color. Alright, in the sketches section of your sketchbook, right at the top, watercolor techniques. The first technique we're going to do is a value scale. I'm going to start with my larger brush and get quite a bit of water in it. You can choose any color you'd like. I did purple and I'm going to get a lot of purple paint on my brush because we're going to start with the darkest value. So I really got a lot of paint on there and I painted just a little bit of that purple paint down. Now I'm just going to quickly dip my brush in the water and paint some more. Quickly dip it in the water and paint some more. And just keep repeating that until you basically get clear. Every time you add water, you're going to get a lighter and lighter value of that color. The next watercolor technique we are going to do is called wet on wet. I'm going to start with my larger paintbrush and get a lot of water on it. Then I'm going to pick up any color. You can choose whatever color you would like and put kind of a pool of water on my paper. Then I'm going to do the same thing with another color using a lot of water and let them kind of start bleeding together. It creates kind of a tie-dyed look. You also want to work really quickly before the paint absorbs into the paper. Once that paint is absorbed, it won't move around and create the desired look. So work quickly. Now I'm using some clean water and just moving around that paint to create more of that desired look. The next technique we are going to do is called salt. For this one, you're going to want to use that big brush again and get a lot of paint onto your paper. And you want it to not be absorbed. You kind of want it to pool up just like how we did with the last technique. I'm going to use a couple colors just to see how the salt affects the different colors. So once you put that paint down, before it absorbs, you want to sprinkle the salt on top. If the paint has already absorbed into the paper and then you put salt on, it won't work. We'll see the real effects of the salt tomorrow once it's dried. The next technique we're going to do is called crayon or oil pastel, whichever one you have. I'm going to start by just drawing some designs or patterns with my crayon. I'm using a white crayon so it's not going to show up very much. I'm going to test out a blue crayon as well. If you have multiple crayons with different colors, go ahead and try out those different colors. See how they are affected differently. Now I'm going to use my larger brush and paint right on top of all of the crayon designs I just drew. Now when I'm painting this, I kind of put too much color or paint on my brush and so it didn't allow the crayon to show through. So I just went back and added some clean water 
And now I'm going to use my paper towel and blot on top. The whole idea of this is that the crayon or oil pastel repels the water in the paint because they are a waxy material. The next watercolor technique we are going to do is called paper towel. This technique creates a lot of really cool texture that works well if you're trying to create texture of rocks or mountains. So I'm going to start out the same way as the other techniques, getting a lot of wet paint, whatever color you would like, onto the paper, working quickly before it absorbs in. And then I'm going to bunch up my paper towel and start blotting it down onto that paint. And as you see, it starts to create a texture. Now I might have to lift it up a few times and repress down until I get the desired look. The next technique we are going to do is called dry brush. Dry brush works really well if you're trying to create grass or trees. So I'm going to start with the larger brush and get it wet with some water. And then I'm going to get paint just on the tip of my bristles. Try not to dip the whole thing in the paint. Next I'm going to fan out those bristles, creating little clumps which will then create those lines. I realized I had too much water in my brush so I had to go back in and take some of that excess water out because the name says dry brush and that's what you really want is a pretty dry brush. So then I re-fanned it out and now it's creating some really great line designs. You also want to press lightly on your brush and kind of brush up in an upward motion to create those lines. If you have a big chunk like the one I have on the right, that means you have too much water in your brush and you would just want to use some paper towel to absorb some of that extra water. The last technique we're going to do is called transparency. For this one I'm going to use my smaller brush so I can create more detail. We're going to start with light values and colors and work our way darker. So I'm going to start by making a light blue. So I'm putting some blue paint into the tray and adding water to it to dilute it and make it a lighter shade of blue. Now I'm going to start by painting some light blue circles. You can paint whatever shape you would like and you can paint it in whatever color you would like. Just make sure it is a light shade of that color, which is a color mixed with the water. Now that I'm done with my first light layer, I kind of want that to dry. And now I'm going to go back in with a darker blue or a deeper blue and paint just off to the side right on top. Again you want that first layer to be dry so they don't bleed together and with that darker color you want to see a noticeable difference. Now we're going to go in with one more darker color. You really want that paint to be dry so you might need to wait for a minute or two or even kind of fan it out. Now I'm going to do my last layer, which is going to be the darkest color. So I'm going to go in there with some purple. That first layer of purple that I did didn't turn out very dark, so I'm going to go back over it a couple times with some more paint to really build up that dark value. The darker it is, the more of that desired effect you're going to get. And remember, you can use whatever colors you would like. You do not have to use these colors. You just want it to start with a really light value and gradually get darker with those three different shapes. Once you are done with this, you have completed your watercolor techniques.